In this video, I will show you how to use the internal real-time clock on an Arduino Uno R4 Minima to display the current date and time on an LCD screen. This is useful for performing specific actions at certain times of day or on certain dates. Just for the sake of demonstration, in this video I have a program that is toggling which LED is on once every 20 seconds. Normally in a simple Arduino program you could just do that using the delay command, but I wanted to be able to demonstrate faster changes here and not have to wait hours or days to trigger specific things. The addition of an onboard real-time clock is an improvement you get with the Uno R4 over the older Uno R3. You can use external real-time clock modules with the R3, and those should also be compatible with the R4 if you want to use one. The caveat with using the onboard clock specifically for the R4 Minima is that it does not have easy access to a battery backup for the real-time clock, at least as far as I can tell from reading the Arduino documentation and forums. In contrast, the R4 Wi-Fi does have access to a battery backup pin, and those external modules that you could use with the R3 many times have a coin cell battery slot to provide backup for the real-time clock. So if the clock has battery backup and your Arduino loses power, then the clock will continue to keep time and have the correct time when your Arduino powers back on. But in this case, with the R4 Minima, if your Arduino loses power, there is no backup power for the clock. So when your Arduino powers back on, the clock is going to reset at the time that you initially had set in the code, which we will look at in a minute. Now, if you just want to use the real-time clock and print the date and time to the serial monitor, you can do that without any external circuit at all. So again, in this video, we're going to focus on printing the date and time to the LCD screen and toggling some event, which in this case is these three LEDs. We do have previous videos in our Arduino tutorial series that go over how to connect LEDs and how to connect this LCD screen, so I am not going to repeat the wiring diagram for those in this video. Again, you can find those videos linked in the description of this one. Instead, we are going to assume you have this all wired up, switch over and take a look at the code for how you can get the real-time clock to work with the LCD screen and controlling the LEDs. Switching over to look at the code, what I'm doing here is really a merger of two example programs. We have the example code for the Liquid Crystal library, and then the example code for the real-time clock on the R4 Minima. So you can find links to both of those sources in the video description, but I'm going to go through line by line here to talk about what the code does and the changes that I made. For starters, you need to include the two libraries you'll be using, one for Liquid Crystal and one for the real-time clock. I then declare a bunch of time variables, year, month, day, hour, minutes, seconds, and three pin variables for the LEDs. We then initialize the Liquid Crystal display. This is telling it which pins it is going to be communicating with on the Arduino. And then in the setup function, do a bunch of setup stuff, set pin modes for the three LEDs, setting those all as outputs, turn them all off initially, set up the number of columns and rows for the LCD screen. Again, I went through all of that kind of fast because that is all covered in our previous videos. And then here is where you set up the start time and date for the real-time clock. This comes from the example code on the Arduino website. The part you need to change is the part in parentheses here to set the time and date. So going in order from left to right, we have the day of the month, the name of the month, the year, the hour in 24-hour format, the minutes, the seconds, the day of the week, and then whether it is currently daylight savings time. The caveat with doing it like this is that the setup function runs every time your Arduino powers up. So again, if your Arduino loses power or if you push the reset button, this line of code is going to reset to the initial time. So using this method in the setup function, you need to manually adjust the date and time every time you upload new code to the Arduino. The other caveat is that, of course, it takes a little bit of time for the code to actually upload to the Arduino. So if I press the upload button here, you see that it takes a few seconds for the code to actually get compiled and uploaded until I will ultimately get the little done confirmation down here at the bottom. 
and it will say done uploading. So it should be less than a minute, and if you only care about hours and minutes, that isn't really going to affect your time. But if you want exact seconds, then you will need to measure how long it takes from when you click the upload button to when you get the done confirmation down here and compensate for that when you enter the seconds in your time. Moving on to the loop function, we use the RTC library to get the current time and then store the current time in each of these different variables. So one for year, one for month, one for day, hours, minutes, and seconds. We're then going to position the LCD cursor on the first row of the screen. It starts counting at zero, so the first row is actually row zero, not row one. And print out the date in month slash day slash year format. If you want to print the date in a different format, then you can just rearrange the print commands for whatever format you want. We then print out the date, and to make spacing consistent, we have some extra logic, these if statements, to check if the month or the day are less than 10, and if they are, we print an extra leading space before the single digit number for the month or day. And again, that is just to keep spacing consistent, so that way the month and the day always take up two character spaces on the screen. We don't worry about that for the year, since the year is always going to be four digits. We then move the cursor to the next row and print out the time in hour, minute, second format. Again, this defaults to 24 hour time, so if you wanted to do 12 hour format with AM and PM, you would need to modify that by detecting if the hour variable is over 12. If it is, you could set a flag to indicate that it is PM instead of AM and then subtract 12 from the hour variable to get the time you want to display. But again, I kept things simple here and we are just displaying the 24 hour time. Here we have similar logic where if the hour is less than 10, we print a leading space. But then if the minutes or seconds are less than 10, we print a leading zero. So for example, six minutes after the hour, we'll display as zero six instead of just six, or nine seconds we'll display as zero nine instead of just nine. And that keeps things consistent with the formatting you are used to seeing on a digital clock, where the minutes and seconds will always take up two digits, even if the current number is only one digit. We then go on to the code to make certain things happen at certain times. And I did this with my own very simple code just using if statements to detect when the seconds variable equals a certain value, and then I will make something happen like turning on and off certain LEDs. Again, I did this over a much shorter time period just so I could demonstrate it in this video, but if you wanted to make certain things happen at certain times of day or on certain dates, you could use the other time variables in the condition for your if statement. For example, if you wanted to make something happen at 6.30 a.m., you could write if hour equals six, and the symbol for and is a double ampersand, and minutes equals 30, and seconds equals zero. So the condition for this if statement would happen the first time it goes through the loop and detects the time where the hour is six, the minutes are 30, and the seconds are zero. The caveat with doing that is that your code runs really fast. This loop is going to run more than once a second. So technically it will come through here again less than a second later, and this condition will still be true because these seconds have not changed yet. So one way to get around that is to put a delay at the very end of your loop. If you have a one second delay, then it should only be checking the time once a second. Another way to do it would be to set a flag variable to detect when this condition has happened once, and then you ignore or don't do this condition if that variable is true in the future, but you would then need to reset that variable for the next day if you wanted this alarm to happen every day. So I'm not gonna demonstrate all of that in this video, it really depends on what exactly you want to do with the conditions. The way I have it here is sort of harmless because the digital write commands are just going to overwrite what is already happening. So if the first time this loop comes through, it says digital write LED one high, the second time it comes through, 
LED one is already high, so this digital write command isn't really actually doing or changing anything. But if you do have some code where you really wanna make sure it only happens once and does not execute again the next time it comes through the loop, then again, you would need to change this around a bit. To summarize, this was an overview of how you can display the current date and time on an LCD display using the built-in real-time clock on the R4 Minima with some caveats about battery backup and how you are setting that initial time, which will reset when your Arduino resets or loses power, how you are displaying the date and time with those leading spaces or zeros, and how exactly you are controlling events that happen at certain times. For more Arduino tutorials and cool science projects you can do with an Arduino, check out the links in the video description. For over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out the rest of our YouTube channel and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.